Good day to you, Guyana, and welcome to Facing the Nation. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us today. Of course, as you know, today is a very big day, a very important day for our Guyanese. We go to the local government elections poll for the first time in more than two decades. And it is very fitting for me to begin the program by, first of all, taking the opportunity to urge those of you who have not yet voted thus far to get out there. Go, um, of course, it is your constitutional right. Go out and vote. You have your ID cards. Um, most of you, the majority of our citizens are voting the same place uh, that they voted in the during the general elections, of course. Um, just for some, for some encouragement, I'm sure you are seeing the dark on my finger. I, I, I don't know if you can see it from your living rooms, but I voted. So many persons already voted. So if you are sitting at home, you can go out and vote. I know some of you have some questions. Um, throughout the morning period, I've been getting some questions uh, sent to me via Facebook and so on about people who are a bit confused. It's not too late because the polls don't close until 6 p.m. So. I have the, he, he's not only the Minister of Citizenship, but today on this program he's here acting in his capacity as the campaign manager for the local government elections, that's for APNU AFC, Mr. Felix. I thought it fitting to have Minister Felix on this program to answer some of the questions. I know some of you are at home with questions, questions that the minister that they um, manager for local government elections can answer at this time because we know that you still have enough time to go out there and vote. So what we'll be doing while I'm chatting with Minister Felix and getting an update from him on how things are going on the ground when it comes to today's local government elections, I will also be giving you an opportunity to call in. So you can call while we're having our discussion. You can call in with your questions. And again, we are specifically dealing with local government elections regarding what is happening today. He's not going to be dealing with issues regarding citizenship and any other matter that he's responsible for. If you call and you pose questions that have nothing to do with local government elections today and voting today, I will be forced to disconnect the call. So you always know that I beg you every time we open the phone lines to follow the rules. So the phone lines are now open, but we will begin our discussion uh, with Minister Felix. Thank you very much, sir, and welcome back to Facing the Nation. Thank you very much for having me here, Malaika. You are very welcome. Let's talk about what, because I know you've been around um, throughout the morning. What's, let's talk about what's happening on the ground. Are, are there enough? We were even seeing media reports that there is some sort of trickling. Are those reports accurate? Is it too early to call? Let's talk. In different areas, the situation would have a different description. Generally, around Georgetown and its environs, the turnout has been disappointingly slow. It is correctly described as a trickle, but I'm using this opportunity given to me here to encourage all persons who are registered to go out and vote. Cast your ballot for the party and candidate in your area so as to empower your council, whether it's an NDC or a municipality, to manage the affairs of your communities and to get work done for the benefit of that community. This is a new dispensation coming into being, where NDCs and municipalities will have the sufficient authority to make decisions about what works are to be done, what bridges are to be repaired. Nobody in Georgetown will then have the power to tell an NDC out of Georgetown what bridge is to be repaired, what dam is to be cleaned, what canal is to be dug, uh, when to catch trays. These are all facilities which you are empowering your councils to make decisions on your behalf and to execute on your behalf. It's an empowerment which we have not had in years, under the, as you are aware, the, there is a proportional representation ballot and there is a constituency ballot. 
under the constituency ballot, you will be electing someone who will be responsible, directly responsible to you and to the council for developmental works in that area. After this election, those who are elected in the constituency, which is the bottom part of the ballot, you can approach them and question them on works you think should be done or if you feel that the work was not done properly or the work is still to be done, you can approach that councillor. That person who has won in that constituency will be responsible to the citizens in that constituency for all works to be done in that community. It is that councillor's duty to take the affairs of that constituency to the council and to have it addressed there. So go out and cast your ballot and empower yourself, empower your councillors, empower your NDC, M NDCs and your municipalities to take on the management of affairs within your NDC and constituencies. Mr. Felix, at this time, should there be worry that, um, because again, the, the media is reporting, widely reporting that, you know, it's, it's, there's low turnout. And there was this thing about doom and gloom even before we got to this point where people kept saying that, look, the government should have made today a national holiday so people can have easy access and so on. At this point, are you uh, even concerned? And not only, this is not only for AP and UAFC, should any of the groups, parties, or organizations involved in local government elections, should any of them be concerned? at this moment in terms of the turnout? For my party, mm -hmm. I am concerned. And uh, before I came here, I was in certain communities, and when I leave here, I'll be going back to those areas for which I have responsibility to get people out to vote. Mm -hmm. That's why you have activists in the field. But are, are you allowed to have those activists in the field on the day of local government elections? Because there yes, may be some the, questions. The, the law permits you, I think, 100 or 200 meters away. You can't canvas within a specified period away from polling station. Outside, once you're outside of, of that legal limitation, then you are free not to hold a political meeting, but you can meet with your constituents, encourage them to go and vote. Okay, that is not illegal. No, that is not illegal. And this doesn't only apply for all, all, it's, the, it's all elections. The, all elections. Mm -hmm. You are prohibited. I can't remember the distance if it's 100 or 200 meters away. But there's Caller, a, stay online. Stay there's online, a, There's Caller. a specified okay. distance away from which you can't canvas. Mm -hmm. Outside of the distance, whatever the distance is, you are free to approach your constituents and encourage them to vote and exercise their legal responsibility. All right. Um, thank you for that. We have a call online. Um, viewers at home, uh, don't forget, um, it, it, this is just a short dis discussion, a brief discussion with um, Minister Felix, who also uh, is the campaign manager for APNU AFC in the local government elections. This uh, discussion is just designed to give you an urge, urge you to get out and vote. And, and in this case, it's regardless of which um, party, which candidate, or which group you will be voting for. Uh, as our discussion continues, I'm taking your calls and permitting you to ask questions specifically if you have concerns or queries regarding with voting today. Caller, welcome to Facing the Nation. Yeah, good afternoon, Malika. Good afternoon. They have people that are 70 and old and they cannot walk. Mm -hmm. And they have to take the last money to come out on the road. So I kindly ask for y'all if y'all could have get a bus to take them to the destination. Because I'm off living in Sapphire and also I'm not feeling well too. Mm -hmm. All right, caller. All right, caller. You're gonna have to give us some additional information, but you ha may have to wait until after the program to call me to give me the additional information, and I will pass it on to Mr. Felix. Okay. I would like caller wait, day. stay online. I would like to tell the caller that we do have such a program. I was in Sophia, not Sophia, last evening, and 
we do have an arrangement to pick up uh, persons similar to the description you have given to ensure that they are taken to their poll, their respective polling stations uh, to allow them to cast the ballot. So it would be important for you to give me if you live in Sophia because Sophia is my area of responsibility, five and six, constituency five and six. Uh, and I would be only too willing to uh, pass your information on to those who are on the ground right now uh, so that they can um, search and find uh, where you are with a view to making uh, such arrangements that will enable them to take you um, to vote. All right. Um, caller, welcome. Uh, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do you have a question for Mr. Felix? Yes, I'm going to You say you have put on the left thing. You have put VAT. All right. I'm not, we're not dealing with VAT today, as I said. Apparently, the caller probably joined late. The phone lines, callers, those of you who are calling in right now, the phone lines are only open today because it is the day uh, when we go to the polls when some of us are currently voting for local government elections. We've been getting questions and queries and in some cases confusion. So Mr. Felix is not here in his capacity as Minister of Citizenship. Winston Felix is here as the manager for the local government elections for APNU AFC. So he's taking questions that you may have in terms of voting today. Nothing else. He has been on this program before dealing with other issues, and he will be back to deal with other issues. But today is specifically for local government elections. Please stick to the rules, callers, and viewers. Thank you. Caller, welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, after 20 years, government want local government elections. And hope after a true result, there is no problem. Okay. That is your comment? Thank you for that. Viewers, when you're coming through, turn the volumes of your television sets down, please. Caller, are you there? Thank you. Hello? Yes, caller. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. I'm 24 years old, right? Yes, ma'am. I never missed a election. And um, I have a problem with my two years of phone right now. And I'm glad to come out and vote, but I have $1,000 to last me until I get pension, right? What area are you calling I from, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. The corner after the seven days church. Okay. And they come here. The tent out on the right hand side. All right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, Minister Felix is listening, and I think he has a team there um, doing some transportation for him. All right? Okay, thank you. You're very welcome, ma'am. All right, we soon will have to begin to wrap up the discussion, the conversation with Minister Felix, because as you know, he continues to monitor what's happening. He did say that. Um, he is not fully satisfied with what he's seeing in terms of the amount of people going to the polls to vote, so he will uh, soon be returning to various communities and areas to see what's happening and urging people to go out and vote. And I keep saying, uh, we all know it's no secret uh, where Mr. Felix and my own commitment and vote went. That is no secret. We all know that. But we are specifically speaking right now for people voting in general. This is your chance. This is your opportunity to elect who will run your communities. You know very well who we support and who, would like, we, who we would like you to support. But we want everyone to go out and vote today. Caller, welcome to you. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, in my career, yes. we appeared on who we run in. All right. Okay, caller. I'll, I'll ask Mr. Felix to express. Yeah, he's he doesn't know. It's a it's a bit late at this point that he doesn't know. But let me just take another call before Minister Felix responds. Caller, welcome. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Mr. Felix, what is the budget election? 
All right, we're not dealing with that today either. If you have a question or a call, we're not dealing with the PPP. We're not, we're not dealing with those issues today. I keep saying this program is open and we discuss these things. Every week we discuss something different. So just allow the persons who have concerns about their own voting today, just give them a chance to come through. All right, we just have a few more uh, minutes left with Minister Felix. Again, Minister, uh, for those people who are sitting at home right now, what? because I know you're on the ground and you're going door to door. Um, call or stay online for us, please. You're going door to door. But for those persons okay. at home listening now, just uh, uh, and once again, encourage them to go out and vote. Call or stay online. Hi. Yes, Malaika. There is a benefit to the residents of the NDCs and constituencies to go out and vote. You want to vote into office someone of your choice. You don't want to abstain and allow the other person's vote to elect someone who might not be favorable to you. So my urge to you is to go out Examine the ballot and cast your ballot, cast your vote on that ballot for the party, for the individual or the group who you think would best represent your interests after the results are declared. It is your civic responsibility to vote and in this local government election which has not been a very common feature in this country david granger has brought it back because he feels that people in communities should be allowed to manage their own affairs and that is the message we have been preaching the empowerment of people living in communities so i call upon all my comrades all my fellow Guyanese citizens, wherever you are, to get out and vote and improve the trickle to a constant flow of voters to your respective polling stations. Thank you, Minister Felix. Right before I let you go, sir, um, just, just to ask about two or three of the questions that were sent to me earlier today. Someone asked, um, Someone is saying that they only received a, they received a ballot only with APNU AFC. Is that supposed to happen? Well, if only APNU A plus AFC is contesting that PR ballot or that constituency ballot, then that would be the case. But uh, as I understand it, in almost all instances, they are at least two parties and two candidates on the ballot. One being AP and U plus EFC, the other being PPP. Mm -hmm. It is possible that there might be a ballot somewhere where only the AP and U plus EFC is contesting um, that constituency and so that might be the only person on the ballot because this is a constituency and NDC municipality specific elections. And the vote will be counted. The ballot the will vote, be counted. The ballot will be counted. The All votes right. will be counted. And the final question sent to me before I let you go. Of course, this is a given, but I, I'm assuming people will feel more comfortable to respond if the response come from me, comes from you. Uh, am I am I not supposed to vote twice? The person asking if they're supposed to vote twice. The ballot is arranged for you to vote twice, and one expects that you would exercise your franchise in both areas. The top part of the ballot allows you to vote for a political party or a voluntary group in the NDC, the Neighborhood Democratic Council, or the municipality 
At the close of poll, when the votes are counted for the top part of the ballot, that is the proportional representation aspect. Seats will be awarded to the parties and groups taking part who receive votes proportionate to the ballots cast in their favor. So in a 18 seat council, Georgetown on the other hand is, has um, 30 seats. The six political parties and voluntary groups participating in Georgetown are, part, are contesting for 50% of the seats on the Georgetown City Council, that being 15. So when the votes are, are counted and the results declared, each party and voluntary group acquiring sufficient votes will be apportioned seats proportionate to the votes cast for them and in most total at the end of it all 15 seats the other 15 seats must be won on the first pass the post system which is the the ballot cast below and that is why you must vote below for the individual you want to represent you in that constituency so each of the 15 constituencies has a candidate for APNU, possibly a candidate for the PPP, and the other four um, voluntary groups participating in the elections. So you need to vote twice. One in the, in the, in the uh, municipality or the NDC block, which is proportional representation at the top, and then at the bottom, in your specific NDC, there is an individual. And so 15 persons must now be elected, one from each constituency, to fully compose a 30 seat council that the Georgetown City Council is. 15 will come from um, the proportional representation and one each from the 15 constituencies when you vote below. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Felix. We have to let you go now. Just before we do that, I'd like to take this final call. Caller, are you there? Yes. There's something I want to discuss, uh, what's happening in Essequibo. Uh, ones are using their home, which is basically, well, I want to discuss what a home is about. So, yeah, it's sensitized, or not only sensitized, but to tell people. They close to the polling station and actually bring them in to another party, actually forcing people who they must vote for. I don't know. I know that information, the police, and so I want to discuss with Mr. Felix. I don't know if you have my number there and if you could call me. Caller? Yes? What I will go do now, what I will do is ask you to stay online for me. Yes, ask. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to, in a, a moment, we'll take a quick break um, so that I can let Minister Felix get back to the fields. And w during that break, I will take your information. Is that okay? Yes, I'll hold the call. I'll hold it. All right, call it. Stay online. Viewers, unfortunately, this is where I have to let Mr. Felix uh, get back to his very, very busy schedule today. Once again, he's urging everyone to go out and vote. Um, of course, coming up on the other side of this very quick break, um, we'll stay on the note of communities and so on. This time we'll be talking about uh, ACTA's role in helping to boost um, economic village um, the, the economies of, of villages in, in terms of certain activities so coming up after that break we will have uh, miss allison butters she is the um, chairperson for actors fishing committee so you'll hear much more of that on the other side of this a very quick break this is facing the nation thank you very much minister felix thank you very much Malika.
right. Thank you very much for staying with Facing the Nation. Before I chat with today's next guest, um, we had a disconnection. The person, the, the information that we were taking uh, during the, the, at the at the beginning of the previous break. Sir, I'm asking that you call two two five seven eight five three. Um, anytime after 2 p.m., that's um, about in the next hour or so, 225-7853, and I will take the information to you and pass it on to Minister Felix. And those goes all, that, that goes also for the other persons who are having some issues in terms of getting out there and vote. We will see how best we can assist you, assist you with the next few hours, um, because remember, the polls close at 6. But now let's talk about coastal villages economies and I'm using that term coastal village economies because that is what uh, ACTA, AGDA that is uh, the African Culture and Development Association most of us by now we're familiar with ACTA it's become like a household name for us ACTA is on a miss mission to ensure the development of coastal village economies and with me none other to discuss that who better than to have Miss Alison Butters she Grant. is Alison Grant Butters. Butters Grant. Alison Butters Grant. Um, sometimes we get mixed up with the two names. Alison Butters Grant, who is the chairperson of the fishing committee. She's on the program here to discuss that, not only fishing, but developing the economies in general. Thank you very much for being here, Ms. Grant, Mrs. Grant. And thank you for having me, too. <laughs> and good afternoon, Diana. All right. It's a pleasure to have you. And I, I, our conversation, is it comes at an appropriate time because we're talking about developing village economies, and it comes at a time when we're at the polls. We're voting for local government elections, and, of course, the president and the government of Guyana continues to preach the importance of developing communities and, and, and villages. So I think our conversation, indeed, comes at an opportune time. First off, let's talk about this mission to develop these economies. Okay, ACTA has started the initiative mm -hmm. in addressing various, identifying various levels of interest where the economies of these villages mm -hmm. can be made progressive. Okay. So what we are, in my role, yes. since that I am a woman in fisheries, yes. <laughs> We are looking at increasing of ownership mm -hmm. in these villages, reviving the fishing villages that used to be fishing villages. And we started in Victoria. Mm -hmm. We met with the people in Victoria two Saturdays ago mm -hmm. and speaking to them as to the levels of where they can address in reviving the village economy as a fishing village. Mm -hmm. We choose Victoria first because my company will be setting up another facility in okay. Victoria. Mm -hmm. And the historic nature, or the history, I must say, of Victoria, we thought that would have been the pristine place to actually start our initiative. For fishing. For starting talking about village economies, especially in fishing along the coastline. Mm -hmm. Victoria would not be the only place that we would go to, but we started there. Mm -hmm. As you know, Victoria was bought by slaves. Yes. And it should be an inspiration and motivation to our people to want to want better mm -hmm. and want more. With it being on the coast and people in there that used to be fishermen, mm -hmm. for one reason or the other, they were suppressed mm -hmm. in continuing their trade. Okay. So we've had people who came out that Saturday telling us of their interest. We have said to them, it's not only for people with a boat. There are opportunities that you can expand on in the fishing industry. You own a boat, you need nets. You need fuel. Mm -hmm. You need people, how, people that mend the seine. And each one of those are revenue generators. Mm -hmm. I also want to implore women, uh -huh. more women, to enter the industry. I'm happy that you talked about wanting more women. And I'm going to go a bit further in terms of the youth, in terms of what sort of response you've been getting. And the reason I'm asking is that because we're... In an era where 
the glamorous jobs or the glamorous professions, the, do the doc doctors, the lawyers, the, 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 the journalists, the television anchors, uh, even the politicians, it, the, we seem to be moving away from wanting to be a farmer or get involved in fishing. What sort of response or interest have you been getting from the youth, in, uh, especially Victoria, in those villages? Um, they're interested. They just need to be motivated like groups. Um, and I must say thank you to ACTA mm. for beginning this initiative mm -hmm. because somebody has got to run with it. Yes. And if somebody doesn't do it, not all of us were fortunate enough or privileged enough mm -hmm. to have the same motivation mm -hmm. to do what we do. Now, you mentioned doctors and lawyers mm -hmm. and, you know, professionals mm -hmm. not wanting to go into farming. And if I may say, I'm a re-migrant from the U.S. Yes. And I've worked in corporate America mm -hmm. for 29 years. Oh, wow. And I've worked in diversified roles in corporate America. But I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I left Guyana in 1986 but I never left Guyana. Oh, understood. And I grew up in the fishing industry. I always, first of all, I didn't want to leave. My parents insisted that I had higher education, and I like to say they deported me out of Guyana <laughs> to go to school. It paid off. I yes, mean, it sure yes. did. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom and dad would send newspapers of the week through Solomon Shipping every week. So that, because back in 86, 87, there was no internet for you to read the Chronicle or oh. the Stabrook News or any one of those. So we looked forward at the end of the week to go down to Solomon Shipping on Austrian Avenue just to collect newspapers. And we mm, would spend, just read yeah, and we see would what's spend going our time just home. going through the news to see what's happening in Guyana, mm -hmm. except for what you hear. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to come back home. Mm -hmm. So. Of course, I had to think what I was going to do when I came back home. Okay. And my interest was always in the industry. It was just unfortunate that my parents went out of business in 92 for I'm more sorry. than one reason. And that in itself motivates me to want to continue in the fishing industry just to not only be in it, but to ensure the sustainable quality mm -hmm. that f of fish that is being delivered to the marketplace. Before we talk a bit about your company, how easy or how difficult has the task been? Because again, in the last two decades or so, we have sort of moved away from developing our communities and developing our villages. Everybody gravitated to one area. We're going after where there's the, <laughs> some people say the heavy exhaust and the smoke and, and where there are more people. How easy or how difficult has your task been thus far in terms of working along with ACTA to get um, basically the economies in these villages up and running? Well, first of all, we, will have, we have been doing a gap analysis mm. as to the needs of what the people are looking for. So before we can actually start that process, we need to know the needs. Now, the persons that came out did have an interest, okay. but the biggest challenge for, for them would be finance. Mm -hmm. That's with everything, yeah. We are also, we have a team with a chair like myself, mm -hmm. who is looking at banking and finance. But what we have said to the persons who attended in Victoria, we will be attracting the banks. Like for instance, when I started my business, Citizens Bank, I can attest, was a major driving force mm -hmm. behind my business. Mm -hmm. I'm also a customer at Republic Bank. Mm -hmm. So the banks are very open mm -hmm. to help people that are seeking these types of um, help, mm -hmm. financial help for growing industries, okay. especially when it's viable. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you there's a big demand for fish from Guyana all over the world. I get calls as far away as Poland 
looking for fish. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia. We currently export a lot of fish out to the Caribbean. Vanga Mary, it's a big um, seller. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a big this, demand. All of this is your business and, and on that note let's talk about your business and so on how it has developed and how it has as it has evolved and where do you plan to take it and, and Guyanese as customers and even supporters Guyanese expected role and so on. Uh, I think too big sometimes. <laughs> no I don't think there is but ever uh, such thing as thinking I know, too big. I know. <laughs> but where I would like to see and I wouldn't even say my business but the fishing industry out of Guyana. Yes. After living in the U.S. for 29 years and seeing the product that would have graced the shells from Guyana mm -hmm. in the United States. I would like to see our products in mainstream supermarkets mm -hmm. and not just in Guyanese, in Guyanese stores. We must be able to have a standard that we can enter the Whole Foods of the world Mm -hmm. The stop and shops, the shop rights, and they all require a standard in order for us to be able to enter those markets. If not, we'll continue not selling at a competitive level to ourselves. What sort of support is required or needed so that we can be at or set that particular standard that is expected? Well, one, we have to understand packaging. Mm -hmm. The other thing, um, I can speak for the United States. Mm -hmm. There are new laws, mm -hmm. the FISMA laws, the Food and Drug brought out some new regulations that we have to follow in order for our products. Um, some of the supermarkets require insurance. If somebody gets sick from the product, somebody uh -huh. is responsible and held accountable. So, you know, there's a whole different level to the value, the supply, and all the chains that are involved. Okay. But, of course, we have to research that, and somebody's got... Now, I can do that for my company. Um, the other companies that send to Europe, send to other places, you know, we have BV, we have Noble Sea Foods, and they've been in the business for a very long time, and they also adhere to very high standards. Okay. You know, but for the smaller or the medium-sized, medium-scaled um, businesses, you know, they there's a lot of need to, to be educated in that area. But coming back to our village economies, mm -hmm. and that's what ACTA is actually taking to these villages, educating them on the different areas of skills needed, like oh, in the okay. fishing industry. It's just teaching. Mm -hmm. Right? In the fishing industry, we either fillet the fish. Mm -hmm. Before you fillet the fish, of course, you have to scale the fish. But it's just not filleting, scaling, and packing the fish. You have to learn what are the good manufacturing processes that are needed before you even touch the fish. Mm -hmm. And it even goes all the way back down to the fishermen, how they handle the fish before the fish is actually delivered to me and before it goes to the regular consumer. So it's a sort of um, maybe large-scale training that may uh, yes, have to be and, done eventually? Um, in my company, mm -hmm. I actually have a certificate from Cornell University mm -hmm. on good manufacturing processes. Mm -hmm. And we have trained our girls and guys that work for us as to how to follow from the delivery of the fish to the packaging, packaging. of the fish uh -huh. so that we can avoid any form of cross-contamination. And that's very important when you want to target our overseas markets. So going into Victoria is just not getting people to come to work, mm -hmm. but you're teaching them a skill, teaching them a trade, mm -hmm. teaching them, and not only for my business, if they decide they wanted to go somewhere else, um, they would have the skill set. Mm -hmm. So we're even thinking along the lines of some form of certification for people who would have gone through that program before even starting to work in our facilities. Are you getting support, expecting or even requesting some sort of report um, from the government, uh, support actually from the government of Guyana and especially as it regards to all the things that need to be put in place to ensure that we're at a high standard? 
Well, as we put our documentation together mm -hmm. in regarding our village economies, mm -hmm. I can see us at some point having a conversation or a presentation to our government to see what policies that we can add or what policies could be amended mm -hmm. in order for adherence to support the village economies. Okay. Because they have to be some form of motivation to the people. And like I like to say, governments are here to do policies. Mm -hmm. You know, they're to ensure that we live in a safe and fair and free environment. But we, the people, have got to help the government mm -hmm. make their jobs easier. Mm -hmm. Like ACTA is doing, we're going out there to the village and say, what do you need? What didn't you have? Mm -hmm. What can we bring, bring to you, you in order that you can get up and make a decent living or a better living for yourself and your family? Mm -hmm. And then we can say to the government, if there's something that needs to be changed or added or we need to support, and it's a viable need, then the government then, yeah. is there to you know, support us. But we cannot expect the government to go into the village and at the same time, Do like everything. the Minister of Security, uh -huh. you know, the, the, the minister who was here, uh -huh. Minister of Security, citizenship. citizenship. Mm -hmm. The Minister of Citizenship has his job to do to ensure that his area mm -hmm. is done. Mm -hmm. the minister of Finance has to ensure yes, yes. that there's enough money. And, you know, yeah, they we, all have their different exactly. roles. Exactly, we all have to play But we, part. as a people here in Guyana, we cannot sit and wait for a government to give us a handout. Mm -hmm. We have to get up Agreed. and work. And the other thing that I want to point out, all of us would, were not fortunate to be able to have a university, university education, a Guyana School of Agriculture education, or any higher mm -hmm. form of learning. Yes. So we need to come back into these villages and give back and show the people that are living there that, of course, we're not going in there with the expectancy that we're going to teach them to become a doctor. But we're going to teach them how they can use the resources in their villages to start the economy rolling. I saw this week's newspaper where there's an ad from one of the agencies that are saying to the importers of food, and there are all these listing of regulations that are going to be needed before people bring imported products into the country. And I thought it was a great initiative. But what the motivation should be is for us to go there and cultivate right. yeah. the same products that are being imported into the country. We have canned corn. We used to grow corn. Mm -hmm. We have resources. We have land. We can grow potatoes. We have land that we can grow broccoli. We have land that we can grow beets. We have land that we can grow carrot. Why aren't we growing it? We have land. What we can do is bring in the infrastructure that is being used in the areas of growing fish in Latin America, we bring those technicians in with, with the knowledge in order to work with us to make, make. our aquaculture mm -hmm. a viable industry. We cannot just start growing fish because we hear fish is being sold in China or fish yeah, is so being let's sold just in, jump and just we jump on it. It has to be structured. It has mm -hmm. we have to get the technical know how in order to make these industry viable so that we can compete in the international market space. We don't want to have a cost to grow something for ten dollars and China is selling it for two dollars. We can't compete. Who's going to buy it? Exactly. And that is the issue that we continue to have because we have to have the technical skills in order to enter the international market. And there's space for a product. Yeah, there always is space. Every time I have someone who come on this program to talk about um, the economy, about business, growing these areas, you know, there's, there's always a sentiment that 
Guyana has the potential to do great things when it comes um, to building the economy, developing the economy, and so on. Before I have to begin my to wrap up my very wonderful um, and enlightening conversation with you today, what's next for this project, this venture, um, in terms of uh, restoring or reviving these village economies? Well, we will be going back to the villages. We went to Victoria. Mm -hmm. Now we are looking at Hope, we are looking at Belleville, we are mm -hmm. looking at wow. all the villages along the coastline. And we will be doing a public announcement as to the date and place and time mm -hmm. as to where we will be going next. And we expect to have a big turnout of people coming. So we're not only going to Victoria for the Victorians. Okay. We're, gotcha. we're all going to hope for the ho people from home. We want everybody to come. Tell us what the needs are in your fishing village. Because we have a lot of fisher folks along the coastline. I had a gentleman in my office this morning who have three boats. And after I was telling him what the intention is, he said, well, Miss Allison, you know, I could wind up with like but 10 boats. I said, yes, there's, a, and there's not only a market just for fish. The waste of the fish, because the facility that I'm putting up, there would be tolerance for no waste. It would be a zero waste facility. We are also looking at energy generation. Mm. If it will be, if we'll be using solar or waste the energy, something. we're looking at what is the most viable solution for us to save on energy. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking to GPL as to how, if we use X, Y, Z to mm -hmm. generate energy, how we can sell it back to the grid, or how we can provide energy for our brothers and sisters on the East Coast. At the same time, it's another form of revenue for us. So that, so when you look at the whole village economy scale of things, it's just not about fish. Fish is my industry. Mm -hmm. But there's a there whole host of, of other revenue generation gener generators that can be done. At the event, we had a young lady who was from Guyana School of Agriculture who has an interest in coming back to the village mm -hmm. to get the people, the youths involved in teaching them what she has learned mm -hmm. at GSA into the village. And we implore people who you know about fisheries, mm -hmm. you know about agriculture, whatever your skill set is. Just come into Just the come forum. to the forum mm -hmm. and let us know what you can give and what your needs are. Perfect. And it sounds um, like a really comprehensive and uh, holistic plan. And of course, we'll certainly be watching and, and calling. And you know I will call you uh, for updates and so on. Um, unfortunately, this is where I have to end our conversation for today. I thank you so very much yes. for coming to Facing the Nation. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, my mm -hmm. direct number is 672-2431. Mm -hmm. And you can call me at any time. Okay. It's not a problem. I'm off at 6.30. <laughs> and my day ends until I'm burnt out. That, and I'm off to sleep. That means you're being kept busy, which yes, is not yes, such a yes, bad yes. thing. Yes, Thank yes. you so much, ma'am, for being here. Okay, thank Our you. Our viewers, this is Facing the Nation. We'll take a quick break. On the other side of the break, it will be time for me to wrap up with you today. Stay tuned. And it's just about time for me to leave you this week from Facing the Nation. Of course, as usual, the housekeeping matters before uh, we go. Um, I, I, I think Miss Allison Butters Grant forgot to uh, mention and to thank a few people. So the persons from her fisheries team, from the fisheries team who are uh, tuned in, 
I say thank you to you <laughs> on her behalf. She didn't forget you, okay? It's just that I rushed her off a bit, of course, because we are pressed for time. So thank you so very much to Alison Butters Grant for coming on Facing the Nation today and talking about village economies, especially as it relates to fishing and fisheries and so on. As you know, um, developing communities, villages, and so on is very, very important to the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, His Excellency Brigadier David Granger, and of course, by extension, that is also very important to the government of Guyana and the people of Guyana. And that is one of the reasons why in less than a year after uh, going into office, the APNU AFC has managed to pull off the first local government elections for Guyana in the last, what, two decades or so. So it really is a good thing. Again, I'm going to stress, this is the opportunity. Go out, get out there and vote. You still have some more time left. You have um, just over about uh, four hours, four hours left. The polls opened at 6 this morning and they will close at 6 p.m. this evening. So go out and vote. I have already done it. And I always tell people that, I mean, it, it makes your finger look a bit ugly. But I, when I, every time I look at this finger, and I don't even try to take the ink off with bleach, because every time I look at this finger, I feel a sense of pride and a sense of patriotism, because it is there knowing that, you know, I'm alive and well, and I'm able to exercise my franchi franchise, and I'm able to be a patriot, and, 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 and I'm able to vote, to, to choose, to choose the direction in which I want my country to go in. So every time I look at this finger, I swell up with pride. So I'll be walking around like this until it automatically fades by itself. I'm not going to use bleach and I'm try I'm going to try not to do any chores that involves bleach so that it can come off so you know you can you can you can play we keep saying you can play a part in deciding how your country is run and in this case how your community is run and how your communities are developed so this is the last opportunity for now for you to vote for local government elections. So go out there, get out there and vote. Uh, you know where my allegiance lies. You know where I will encourage you to vote. So go out and vote. But at the end of the day, it is your constitutional right to vote and to choose who you want to run your communities or your countries. Um, time is running out quickly before I go. Remember, next Friday is Good Friday. Next week is Holy Week, so there will be no Facing the Nation program on Good Friday. So the next time you see me on Facing the Nation is going to be on the 1st of April. Friday the 1st of April, that will be a April Fool's Day, but there will be no fooling on this program. This is a very serious program. So in the meantime, I want you to be very careful, be safe, have a wonderful Easter. Look out for the little ones. Um, I, uh, remember, so uh, always teach them the rules about flying kites, you know, only in open spaces, not near uh, electric wires and poles and so on, where they can get themselves into trouble and give GPL so much work to do. So ensure that you give them, remind them of all the rules. So in the meantime, until you see me again, have a wonderful Easter, Guyana. Have a blessed Holy Week next week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And again, go out and vote. Today is Friday the 18th of March, and it's local government elections. This has been Facing the Nation. I'm Malika Ramsey. Goodbye.